I was a doorman, right? Yeah. And one where? day, Frank Sinatra came through. It was at the Fairmont. It was a five-star hotel. Okay. Okay. So, we, so Frank came out. And so I asked Frank, you know, man, shoot, man, you've been doing this a long time, man. You're such a professional. The Frank Sinatra told me, son, when you do something, yeah. and from the first day, you have <laughs> butterflies in your stomach. Every time I come on stage, and the first time I don't feel that, I'm going to stop. But you'll always feel that. Because if you lose it, it's done. It's done. And you feel that. You always start from zero. You're... I can see it in you. Yeah. I want you to know Wait, but... that it's already no. in you. Just go out there. And don't you'll... worry, because once it gets... I was airborne ranger for eight and a half years. I was always afraid, and I tell kids, a hero and a coward feel the same way. It's just that when it starts, the hero just get just that. When I was a kid, my uh, parents would sing that song for me. Dan Dan Soy is a Filipino lullaby. When it came to nap time, they would just, you know, be beside me and they would just hum the tune. When I was growing up, Dan was such a white name. <laughs> Dan. Dan from Roseanne, no, it's just Dan Ramos. And I grew up in Montreal, so the teachers would pronounce it Don. Don Ramo, D I N R A M O S, Don Ramo. Never thought my name was special. I'm, I'm like the youngest of three brothers. The eldest brother's name is Ernesto Jr., so we call him Ernie. Middle brother's name is Don, it's not short for Daniel. And when I came out, I just thought, oh, you know, my dad just replaced the O with an A. Don is a good name. Can we, can we name him Don Jr.? No, oh, okay, uh, just, yeah, Dan, D-A-N. <laughs> uh, the story of Dan Dan Soy is about a, a woman uh, leaving her lover Dan Dan Soy to go back home to uh, her hometown of Payao. That's the Filipino diaspora, you know, we're always leaving. My mom's name is Elisa Cabantugan Ramos, and my dad is Ernesto Martinez Ramos. Both of my parents immigrated from the Philippines to Montreal in the mid-70s. Each of them had their own reason for leaving. My mom was fleeing this man from Hong Kong. And my dad came to the Philippines with his... He was one of ten. My mom was one of seven. My dad was a sailor. Ever since I was a kid, 
He would always leave us. He would always be gone eight to nine months a year. And he would only come back uh, during December, January, and February. And early March, he would just leave again. And I'd wait for him to come back to us. And it was hard. When he would um, come back home, that's when he would sneak into my little crib and just pat me on the back and hum dun dun so I his hand and hung dun dun soy to him. And I could see in his eyes that he knew what I was doing, that he could listen, that he understood what I was saying even though I couldn't speak or move or talk. You just see it in his eyes. From where? From Rojas? City? Oh my god. Ugaling 
Gordy Cow, he knows. Ang bayaw, imulang, lang tawon. Okay pa. Like, did you bring her out on dates? No. No dates? No, no nothing. Only one time. Where? That's in the movie, that's it. What did you guys watch? Uh huh? What did you watch? Uh, it's no job before. The, uh, the carry? Yeah. Just a movie there before. Yeah. You still have the fire, you could still, you know. Mom, <laughs> I don't know where mom gets the energy. Uh -huh. Mom gets the energy from above, you know. She always praying, always positive, always happy. She was always very, very nice woman, that believe me. I cannot tell her about that. I just kept quiet, but I know. To find someone like that? Yeah, very, very hard to find. <laughs> Rare. Yeah, very, very hard to find. Maybe some you got to find a woman like that. I hope, like your mother. Hmm. Sarah, Sarah, can you go to the floor, please, to the phone? What did you eat today? You just and had a sandwich and a sushi. Huh? Sandwich and a sushi. Yeah. It's okay. I'm good. I don't need to eat more. Get some more somewhere in the house? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, just sleep, Papa. Yeah. Have a good dinner. Have a good time. I love you all. Yeah. Oh, sige na. Ayan. Usap na lang tayo. My pa used to send my mom like telegrams on the boat. Like an old telegram, you know? Not no text. It's just a telegram. Masaya. It was right there. Masaya din. Sabi ko kay Dan, someday you're gonna make a story, you're gonna make a movie for my life. I don't like, I hate people with a mustache. <laughs> Even he look handsome. Yes. You know? <laughs> Make me sick, Dan. You think your mom is happy when I see you like that? Hey, hey. If it, uh, wasn't, if it wasn't for this. What? Well, I know you have two mustaches. Where's the other one? Down here. <laughs> <laughs> My mom was very artistic. She she was really good with people too. Those are the battles. You remember Morris here before? Morris. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to fight him too. <laughs> Why? We do barbecue here. And you know the the, the pork they don't like her. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and the win goes to the door there. The win <laughs> So he was quarreling with your pa and I heard. Oh no! I go down. <laughs> you protected pa. I said to him, "Why are you quarreling with my husband? What's wrong with you? Because of the pork?" I said, "You know what? <laughs> you have no right to dominate us here. The mother need your ghost to your door. <laughs> mother you need close your door." <laughs> This house, you have no right to tell us. And you, I, I have no control with the no mother way. nature. You don't like the smell of the pot. Close your door. Close your door. You have no right to talk to us like that. You have no control with us. We are the owner here. And I, I am not the. I, I, I cannot control the wind going to your door. You share up your mind. For years, you just embarrass me, telling stories. You know, Danny ate caca. I'm like, why did you tell her that? I thought it was chocolate. And I'll get angry at her. I'll get so embarrassed. But after I grew up, you know, I realized that uh, my mom was just telling a 
her stories. She just wanted to make people laugh. She just wanted people over. She just wanted people to come out and hang. You want to sit down or sit down? I think I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be over here, not talking, and then uh, whatever you want to say. Growing up in Montreal, Canada, you don't um, you don't see a lot of artsy fartsy Filipinos, you know. But yeah, I was good at that. I was good at drawing. I was hated sciences, hated numbers. Didn't wanna. Once I knew what I wanted to do, and that was to make people laugh, that's when I got in trouble. A lot. Oh. It's like drugs, you know? <laughs> you give it to the I watched a lot of sitcoms, a lot of movies when I was growing up. I love The Wonder Years, Family Matters, Full House, Perfect Strangers. 
all the earnest movies. And I'm just a little Canadian kid taking it in, downloading it. That's funny, that's funny. But there was never a, there was never a guy that looked like me. Every year would pass. I'd watch another year of TGIF. I'm like, okay, here we go. All American Girl popped in for for a year, and that blew my mind. And then ABC canceled it, and we were back to zero. And I was like, wait, what? What happened to progress? Oh, that's when I said, Dan, you're never gonna make it in Hollywood. You're short, little, fat, chubby Filipino kid in Montreal. Just be an architect. So that was the plan. But when I was in high school, that's when things started popping. I became one of the models at the Wager Talent Fashion Show. <laughs> Is it one in the Filipino kid walking? I auditioned for it. That was so scary. My first audition. And Samantha Hines. She was the one making sure that we were on point. Yeah, when I got in, she gave me the confidence to strike. Confidence to actually look at a crowd. Make them laugh without even saying anything. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted. And then the following year, I hosted it. But it was so funny. I destroyed. I remember just the curtains. I'm just like sniffing the, the students' like energy. And then when the curtains just open, it's just what? Wow. Could I feel like this every single day of my life? Is there such a job? Is there such a thing? I feel that whole two, three hours, I don't know how long. Just after oh, okay. Hey, that sucked. You guys from the right. All right, I want you guys to say a letter of the alphabet. Let's say, what, Q? Q. Q. So I'm putting you Q. guys, I want you guys to say Q, all right? Q. And you guys on the left, you guys, I don't know, um, a left or a musical note, pick one. Resort to me, fa, so, la, si, and do. Fa. 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 All right. You guys know, what I'm going to hear you guys know, Q, all right, here we go. Q, 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 Next model comes in strutting their stuff, and I'm hosting and also modeling, because, you know, I can do both. I went to Wager High School. Give it up. Woo! Uh, Wager was so bad. <laughs> the government didn't care about us. I was a funny kid. I made everyone laugh. You know, at a certain time in uh, Wager, they canceled the drama and the music program. So what do we have? Fashion show. And that was the moment where I just strutted my stuff. You know, I just showed my my plan stuff. <clears throat> right? In high school, instead of writing essays, I mean, was one class. I asked Miss Louisma if I could just make a video. Very cool. So you don't want to write an essay? No. Art. So it did. It was me, Bavish Mystery, best friends, and Amos Chan. Smart dude. I ended up like editing it on like two VHS decks. At the time, this was like 1998, 97. The, mo the movie. Yeah, I'm gonna say the movie because it was like over 40 minutes long. After 30 minutes, the lunch bell rings, and I was disappointed because now people were leaving. And the teacher goes, no, hey, let's bring them in. I'm like, what? A bunch of other students from all these other classes start coming into the classroom. We all brought our lunches, and like, no, Dan, let's just sit here, rewatch it, and now everyone could watch it. 
I wanted to cry. I remember just hearing and watching everyone's faces, just reacting at Ramtel, Ramos Patel Industries. That was our channel. And then I thought, yeah, maybe there's something here. When Kill Bill came out, I was obsessed with Tarantino. I made a video called Kill Mo. And frame by frame, try to make it look like a Kill Bill parody video. And I screened it right before I hosted it. This uh, Vanier Chinese Association variety show. So now I'm about to get into college in Montreal and all my friends are taking you know, accounting or nursing and I was just like, screw it, I gotta be me. So I applied at Dawson College in the Cinema and Communications program and uh, yeah, I loved it. From 2001 to 2003, I learned flash animation, frame by frame, stop motion video there was a lab that i oh and all the while i'm hosting variety shows other people's 18th cotillion birthdays in the filipino tradition you know, you, you know 18 boys dancing with 18 girls and and i wanted to be one of the dancers but like no then you're gonna host for me okay i'm like okay so i'm gonna have to charge you by the hour thanks and uh, that's how i honed my craft i just so what's your name Tita Bella, wow, that's very good. Okay, um, okay, uh, next one in the program, you know. It was just practice. I, it didn't feel like stand up, but it felt like stand up. Because <laughs> I get booze. Yeah. By the time Dawson was almost over, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a filmmaker. Flash performer. The clown! <laughs> Hello, students. Uh, my name is uh, Johnny. What is your phone? I was living in Montreal. I was like, why would you want to leave Montreal? You're already here. You got just for laughs, just for laughs. You can just knock on your door and you just walk over to to do your set and then go back home, you know. Hey guys, we are here on Sherbrooke and Saint Laurent, home of the Just for Laughs Theater and Museum, where a lot of famous comedians have performed here, like Jerry Seinfeld, Russell Peters, Dan Ram. No, no, but one day I will. In Montreal, as soon as you finish Cégep or college, you got to go to university. So as soon as I did that, I applied to the only program I wanted to get into, which is the uh, film program. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I didn't get in. And that's when everything just stopped. I'm like, wait, well, you don't want me to learn? You don't want me to progress as a filmmaker no for that entire year i was just lost i went into my teacher's offices uh, will aiken and john connelly and told him i you know doesn't want me no i feel like i can't move to that greater echelon and get that bachelor's of arts and i 
I think it was John Connolly. That says, well, I just go to Toronto. What? Yeah, go to Toronto. There's a radio and television arts program uh, at Ryerson University. Like, Ryerson? That sounds weird. Yeah, yeah, it's in the middle of downtown. I think you'll like it. Go check it out. I apply online. It was the only university that I wanted to get into. This was 2004. So I applied in March. A couple of months later, I get an interview at Ryerson. A couple of days later, we get a phone call saying that. And then he said to me, Mom, was, uh, how can we afford? Because the three, bo the three of them are, uh, you know, and me, I just retired 1997. I said, don't worry, I'm gonna sell this house. I don't care about the house, she said. As long as you go to school, we put the money here, over here. It's true. I was the one. I was the one. I said, don't worry about money. It's true. You see, it comes true, huh? Uh-uh, you cry again. Uh -uh. of Young and Dundas, I want everyone to just shut their eyes. Shut your eyes and just listen. Okay. <clears throat> the corner of Young and Dundas. <laughs> Walk like a dog for our question. Walk like a dog for our question. You like hip hop? <laughs> you like hip hop? Jesus! Jesus! Okay, thank you. Um, you know, learning all, everything that has to do like behind the screen. Well, I was at Ryerson on my third year. It was a class called Personal Production. It's where I wrote, produced, acted, edited a movie called Scoopers. It's a mockumentary about the life of three ice cream scoopers. Everyone here loves me. I don't think I've ever told anyone this, but I have the biggest crush on Lars. I keep sending him little love hints, but I don't think he gets it. Got some stuff I can show you in the basement. Here's our storage room, staff only. No, I'm just joking, I, I can show you what's inside. Shit. And I literally worked at that place for four months just so I could get some intel. Think you're, think you're better than me? Huh? Just because you can see color? <laughs> see color? Ah! Working here is great. And I knew when I was about to quit, I was going to ask the owners if I could shoot there. And, you know, around August, I was like, hey, guys, you know, I don't think I'm coming back to Dutch Dream. You know, I'm a student. And uh, do you think I could shoot here? You know, I'll pay you guys. They're like, no. That worked. No. Shoot here for free. Leave it. They gave me two days. I started off here as a scooper. Then after years of manual labor. Are you that stupid? Is there anything left in that? Right. Dante. Well, I hired him because I make him do all the dirty work. He's just a scooper. Definitely not management material. Give me this. What are you doing, Mars? What is this? What? It's perfect. It's broken. You know what I think of this? What? Mars, come on. It's just I just can skip. Just give me that. What are you doing? No. That's what I think. All right. Now watch. All right. Watch for. Where did you get that scoop? Where did you get that? Come on, Mars. Customer just wants his ice cream. How? It's just ice cream. <laughs> just ice cream? I'll show you ice cream, all right? What? All right. Ah! Um, the thing I love about being a scooper is interacting with people. They really make me happy. Hi, sir. Can I help you with anything? Choice. All right. <laughs> I think I'd like to, th if I could please sample that one. This, this one? Yeah, I want a sample. Oh, I'm going to need another sample, please. OK. On the first day of lecture, I was walking by and I looked at the bulletin board and there was a flyer that said, Riot Sketch Troop Auditions. 
my heart started to beat. And I just kept on walking away from it and then went into the lecture and sat down. And I was just like, can I do it? Nah. I can't do sketch. Because previous to that, when I was at Dawson, I tried joining the improv club. On well, the first day I went there, I didn't know improv. I just saw a bunch of white kids acting like monkeys. I'm like, okay, this must be fun. Right? I go in and nobody really introduced me to what this was all about. They were already doing their games and I'm there. I'm like, what? Let me just enter a scene. And they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't know. But I stayed there for the entire 93 minutes, plugging away, trying to learn, learn why I sucked. And I never went back there, so. So when the lecture was over at Ryerson, I walked back to the riot flyer and took it out, took the tag out. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to email this and let him know. And, uh, yeah, they sent me an audition, came up with a couple of characters, went in there, and, um, it changed my life. Riot is the uh, longest sketch troupe tradition that's been happening at Ryerson, kind of like the National Lampoon. I don't know if I said that entirely correctly, but that doesn't matter, because it's my movie. From September to December, we wrote sketches. From January to March, we would, you know, rehearse, cut sketches, shoot video sketches. And then at the end of the year, you know, there would be like a four-night riot festival. And every night we'd perform like two hours of material, show videos, produced, written, acted by the students. Your new adopted brother, a warm welcome when he arrives. Dad. <laughs> What's with this whole adoption business, son? I'm not good enough for you guys anymore. We're all family. Let's dig in. I suck in that motion. I'm Asian! <laughs> Start off with the beat, with your feet. It's not Simon Says, I'm doing it alone, okay? <laughs> I guess you could call my competition. Here, this is yours. No. Oh, man, huh? it's Whoa. Huh? Where is it? Oh, wait, wait. What? I think it's right there. No. What are you doing? Brad, Brad, no. No. Brad. Can you leave me alone, please? Just let her finish the song. No, man, she was butchering Brad, me. Brad, the what she's doing. Brad, you are done. No, I'm not. You're done. Brad, don't, don't do this. this. I have, I have fans. fans. I have fans here. Brad. You have no, you have no fans. Brad, you're Get your hands off the mic. Brad, you're ruining the camera, Rocky. You're ruining the camera. What's in here? Oh, more oh, fruits. Huh? We got. Oh, this is where the comedy comes out. Oh, I have a cigarette too. Hold on, me. Let, let me light it. Let me light. Oh. No, let's go. Where's the exit? Hi. Thank you for watching Making Funnies. No! Are you kidding me? Get this off. What's like kicking guys' ass? As soon as the ride was over, I got an 
email from a woman named Louise Parent. Parent management. She goes, Hey, Dan, I thought you were funny. My husband, Boyd Banks, thought you were funny too. I'm Asian! Uh, well, I don't know if you want to be wrapped by us. And that was the first time I have ever. I booked my first nationwide commercial because of her. Kudo commercials. The first audition ever. God. She goes, Dan, this is for a uh, big role for an ABC movie of the week. I'm like, whoa, what is it? Is it Chef? Is it like, no, you'll be playing a Filipino karaoke singer. I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> my dream! <laughs> so I'm like, I'm studying, you know, I'm asking my Uncle George, Uncle George, can you read this for me? He's like, whoop, there it is. I'm like, perfect. So I'm like, check reading it, I'm like, taking down this. Talking <laughs> back again, I'm like, yes, yes, yes! <laughs> my agent goes like, since you don't have any drama training, I'm going to send you to an acting coach. I go over to this dude's house named Ron Leger. I'm sitting down beside him. He's looking at the lyrics of Won't There It Is. I'm like, this guy's not going to teach me anything. And he's like, what is Womp? Like, <laughs> 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 he's like, what is Womp? I'm like, Bingo! I'm like, and then he goes, where is it? I'm like, what? Where is it? Womp! Womp. There it is. And he goes, bingo! I'm like, what? And he gets up out of his seat, right? He's like, mm. He's like, when you're saying warm, you gotta, you gotta use your solar plexus and you want like this, right? And I'm like, what? So when you're on the tight, right, you just gotta go like this with your eyes. Warm, there it is. And I'm like, what the f***? This guy's a genius! So take that look, like, oh, that's the high one, got it! This is 2005. I didn't have enough money to buy a headshot, so I print it out on black and white ink, right? I paid my cousin Marvin two dollars because that's, that's a lot of ink, you know. I'm on the subway. I'm drawing a headshot, right? and I'm in the casting room, and there's a bunch of other Filipinos. I'm like, oh my god, this is a dream. I see this guy like, sitting beside me. He's on here. He has like an eight pack for some reason. I can see through his sweater. I'm like, this guy's gonna get it. <laughs> And then he goes, uh, so what do you, he goes, oh, so what are you here for? And I'm like, uh, I'm here for the Filipino care. He's like, yeah, me too. I'm like, oh, great. And he's like, yeah, you know, I was in, I was in New York, and now I'm just here in Toronto. I did, you know, neighborhood playhouse, a bunch of UCB stuff off, off Broadway, you know, stuff like that. What about you, Dan? I'm like, I tell jokes. He's like, yeah, okay, cool. And I'm like, I gotta beat this guy. <laughs> they call my name. I'm already in Filipino care. mode actor. I go into the room. I see three casting directors there. I hand him my headshot, and they're like, okay, go to the X, and I'm like, hmm. It's like 20 feet away, so I'm just like, <laughs> so now I'm over here, and then they're looking, and that's pretty light, it's pretty nice, and I'm like, hmm. And one of them just yells out, are you green? Are you green? If you guys don't know what green means, green means is like, this, are you new, this is your first time auditioning. But I heard, are you Korean? <laughs> <laughs> and they're laughing. 
Except for this one woman in the middle, she's just like this, you know? <laughs> so then when I'm on shakalaka, I'm like shakalaka, and then she stands up, she's like, stop it, what? <laughs> she's like, that's enough, it's too much. I'm like, but this is me, this is how it, she's like, this movie's about 9-11. <laughs> I've done comedy all over the world. Want to see where I've been? Uh, come with me now. So I started uh, performing four years ago as a quote unquote comedian, but I started writing jokes about 10 years ago, uh, but I would always be afraid to uh, like perform them on stage. Around 2007, when I was still living in Montreal, Quebec, that's up in Canada, <laughs> I uh, emceed a friend's, uh, family friend's wedding, and I bombed horribly in front of 300 Filipinos, which was so funny. <laughs> But my mom, dad, and my brother Don uh, shared a table with another family, a lovely Jewish family from you know, New York, and uh, they got along so well, right? My mom was drinking with their mom, my dad was judging their dad like this, you know. <laughs> you couldn't drink more wine. <laughs> and after the end of the night, okay, that family loved their family, and they invited us to stay with them 
in their summer home in this place called the Hamptons. <laughs> Look, what the heck is a Hampton? It's like, well, you guys are fine. You guys come on down, you know, bring your bathing suits. Everything's going to be on us. The guy gives us his card. We go back home and do our research because we didn't want to die in his home. <laughs> this guy was an ABC executive producer. This guy was a millionaire. And I'm like, oh, shit. Maybe this guy could help me with my career. Mm -hmm. We got to give them something. But what do you give a millionaire? They can afford anything. And my dad said, we'll have to give them something that they never have before. <laughs> what? What are you looking at? Yeah. The next day, my dad comes back with $175 worth of smoked meat from Schwartz's Deli. Just like, <laughs> like, what'd you buy that? He's like, because they're Jewish, right? I'm like, yeah, but we can't bring this into the States. They're going to confiscate this. He's like, I'll figure it out. Mm. <laughs> So as any brown family wants to go to the States, we leave the border at like, what, 3 a.m.? Because <laughs> the border patrols are going to be tired. Yeah, just go, just go. <laughs> so I'm riding shotgun. My brother Don's driving. My mom's in the back praying to rosary. And then my dad, my dad's just sitting in the back with his fedora, just like. <laughs> we reach to the border, shh, tone down, tone down the stereo. We go to the border. Guy's like, hi, passports, we give him the passports. How long are you guys here for? Just the weekend, where are you guys going? The Hamptons, are you guys bringing anything? My brother says, no. I just go, come on. My mom's like, I'm no, that's okay. <laughs> my, my dad, Ernesto Sr., <laughs> is sitting behind my brother and he just goes like this. We don't have any meat in the back. <laughs> my brother Don is squishing his scary. He's like, what the hell? And I'm like, oh, we're gonna die. <laughs> my mom's brain's like, what did that happen? The Border Patrol officer's like, what did he say? We're like, he didn't say anything. He's seen now. He's like, I, I said we have no meat in the back of our caravan, sir. <laughs> Pop over the trunk, like, damn it! He goes in the back, opens the trunk, grabs a sack of meat. And he's like, what is this? I'm gonna have to throw this away. And my, my mom never wakes up from her prayers, but at that moment, if you're gonna throw meat, she's like, please, sir. I was on my, I was on my thousandth Hail Mary, but you can't throw the meat, they're for the Jews! What? Just like Jesus stuff. He's like, ma'am, I don't know what this meat is. And he chucks it into the trash, and we look at my dad, my dad's like, mm. and I'm like, but don't. Done. <laughs> the guy had enough, so he just lets us go. So we're driving out to the Hamptons ten minutes later. Meatless! You have nothing to show for! And I'm there sitting in front of my account, like my dad opened his mouth. My Don's an account, so he's like, that's like $125 US. And then just out of nowhere, I just go, bah! What did you have to say something? You should have to shut your mouth! Okay, my dad never hits, right? <laughs> This time, oh my, adios mio. He gets up, right? Mm, stands up tall, because he's like three foot four. <laughs> what did you say, huh? He goes like this. Mm. Then he turns around. And then he has like this big sweater. He opens up the sweater. He goes like, mm. That was your mother's leftovers. What? <laughs> gare gare with sinigang and adobo skins. That was the decoy meat. I'm like, decoy meat? <laughs> oh my god, we're celebrating. I'm making out with the meat. Oh, my brother, he wants a piece of it. He puts the meat on his dick. He's like, hey, hey, hey. My mom's blessing him. Blessing him with the whole hell, man. She's like, our fire horn to heaven. I'll be in it. You know, holy water. We reach the Hamptons. We drive like 20 seconds to the door. The gate's open. Gordon's like, Ramos is. My dad is with the meat. He's like, For you, Gordon's like, what's that? He opens it up. I see kosher tears already stuck onto the meat. He's like, is this? He's like, yes, smoked meat from Schwartz's Deli. Oh my God, he was so thankful. The whole day, he was just like eating meat and we're swimming at his pool, right? I'm like, Pa, are you ever gonna tell him that you sat on that for the next eight hours? He's like, no, let him eat it. So I hope you guys have a good time in that round tonight.
chicks with a caravan? I mean, look at me, I look like a freaking pervert Mexican trying to lure you into my bed. I have a very sick mind. What's up with Edward Scissorhands? <laughs> oh boy, I have scissors for hands. When I was a kid, I wish I had like this uh, Edward Scissorhands disease. You know, you wake up with scissorhands. What the fuck? No! Can you imagine him in elementary school in the playground? <laughs> hey, Edward, let's play tag. You're it. <laughs> okay, hey, Steve, you're dead. dead. <laughs> My mom was very artistic. She was really good with people too. She'll grab you. Yeah. You look know, like that, oh huh? <laughs> That's not offensive, no? It's true. Uh, my hands is very quick. Yeah. Maybe I need to learn karate, you know? It's called a um, bayag. She just goes like. I'm really done. I'm very happy. Oh, oh, hey, Amos, my friend. And this is Amos. <laughs> yeah, you're my mother. You're grabbing my balls. You came from me. <laughs> of course, I want to know my baby. Is my baby growing fast? Oh, my baby is my baby. I miss my baby. Here, this is yours. Don't you ever throw something? No. Huh? You like magic tricks? Whoa. Huh? Where is it? Oh, I wait, wait. What? I think it's right there. No. What's in here? Oh, more oh, huh? We got. Oh, this is where the comedy comes out. Oh, I have a cigarette too. Hold on, me. Let, let me no. light it. Let me. Light. Oh. No! No! Where's the exit? Hi. Thank you for watching Making Funnies. No! Are you kidding me? Get this off! What's the kicker guy's ass? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I graduated from Ryerson, and then I decide to be an actor. I graduated from Ryerson for film and television, and he started doing stand-up about two years ago, guys. He's performed all the way from Toronto to Montreal. He's done a bunch of shows in New York, Gotham City, the improv. Guys, he's been in many Kudo commercials. And if you're wondering, he is Filipino, guys. So put a round of applause, everybody, for your next act. Give it up for Dan Ramos, guys. I took part in a sketch troupe. First one was called The Midnight Review. So I go to the room and I introduce myself. You know, I'm Dan. The guy beside me says his name is Dan too. What the fuck? <laughs> we, we can't have two Dans. To be honest with you, another Dan in the cast is like, Cool, I'm totally cool with it, man. Like, it's all right. It's what cool. can I do for you, DeRodes? I like to have a little chicka chicka chit chat. Second one was Touch My Stereotype, and uh, I had a friend named Chantal Renee. She was the one that was like, Come on, let's be weird together. I was like, Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. This is Jonathan. Hi, I'm Madison. Madison, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Dan, our cameraman. Hi, Dan. Hey. Uh, I'll take your oh, picture. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, do you mind just standing on your mark there? And sleep to the camera. Hi, I'm Madison Walsh, and I am independent. 
My name is Mike Tantrak and I'm represented by Budget Talent. Okay. I didn't get a script. No, okay. that's okay. Okay, breathe. <laughs> Sorry. So what I want to see is the face, the faces that you'd make when being forced to eat something that is really disgusting. Okay. And the sounds that you would make of, mm. have you ever had your mouth on someone's anus? Yes. How do you think you would feel about having your mouth on somebody's anus for, let's say, 10, 12 hours per day? <laughs> How much am I getting paid for? A lot. Hey, that's not good. A little. <clears throat> Can I talk, or am I just sort of there? If, you, if words come out fine, we want to hear sounds. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Now it's, it's actual, sh it's manure. It's shit. It's shit. Okay. Action. Can you please stand on your mark, please? Um... <laughs> okay. Have you ever been gay? No. No? Okay. No. Boyfriend? Dad, do you want to help her? I see, like you're always on. Oh. Oh. Some bread? Liver? Actually attached to their anus. Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, that's great. Okay, so take a breath for a sec. Uh, go ahead and have a seat in the lobby, and then we'll be uh, we'll call your attention. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. I'm cool with the girls. Mike, I, I don't know. I think it's a no. We could always hold other uh, another audition. I mean, and Ryan, I, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't feeling right. Really? Yeah. Well, let me just set up another uh, casting call. What? No. <laughs> and welcome to Interviews with Dan Ramos. Today we have a creature here. Uh, mm. I found him mm. outside. Okay. All right, Rob Schneider or Bobby Lee? Wait, wait, no, that was really good. I, here, thanks. here, put on this lipstick. Put it on. Why? It's, it's not gonna put be it on. Just It'll make you funny. No. <clears throat> Put it on. I'll make you crazy. I'll make you crazy. I'll make you crazy. Can I stop? Please stop. <laughs> this is so weird. I don't really know what to say, but uh, this kind of reminds me of the time where we uprooted Montreal and. Uh, we were leaving for Toronto. That morning, I woke up, I think, at 4 o'clock or at 4.30 a.m., I'm not really sure, but I wanted to give you what I had set aside. I know it wasn't much, but this time I haven't given you any. So, uh, I want to remind you that if you do need something, you know where to find me. Also, I guess you already kind of know this, but um, you know, you're going to come across people that are going to try to keep you down and uh, just be haters in general, but I want to remind you of something uh, that probably still applies today, P5X. Take care, buddy.
Okay, then. Well, you know, we don't have to say anything. You know, we all know that uh, we just want you want to wish you, uh, you know, the best, and that uh, you know you may have a better uh, opportunity over there. So we all know that. You know, we all know that. We just say. Uh, you know, be positive and uh, don't uh, be negative, you know. And uh, and anyway, if you miss, uh, you know, you can always come back here. We're always here for support, you know, and you, you don't have to think twice. And, you know, if you miss, uh, you know, eating adobo, you know, dad, uh, dad is here, sitting again, <laughs> and all that, you know. So, yeah, we just uh, wish you the best, you know, and uh, good luck. Hey, Dan. I wish you the best. I wish. Mean, <laughs> 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 no, 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 I really want to miss it. No, can you miss it? Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll edit it out. Oh, you edit it out? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, Dan. Congrats, you're gonna move to New York. Don't worry, we're gonna help you there, you know. And um, be good. Stay safe. We'll support you all the way with mom and pa and your brother. Okay? Call us when you need anything. Okay? Don't. Tell mom and pa all the bad stuff, just give it to me. Only tell mom and pa the good news, okay? So, um, hustle, it's a big city, and that's where stardom uh, begin, right? So, we wish you the best, and good luck, and God bless. I don't know, don't try, see something with your son. Oh, see? Your fa father loves you very much, see, try now. I end up moving to New York and I start plowing through the comedy scene. I did all these open mics. I remember paying $14 to perform at the comic strip. Gotham Comedy Club, 50 and minimum bringer. <laughs> friend Daniel Curlin, who was in that room when the gorilla ran in, gorilla, take a look. was a nerd with the glasses. <laughs> he ended up moving to New York, and uh, we started a sketch comedy troupe called Business Computer. <laughs> and we beat out, I don't know, 12 to 15 sketch comedy troops have a residency at the tank theater and we did everything we wrote a an alf pilot and then like the day before we were supposed to perform it we get a cease and desist letter from uh from the offices of paul fusco saying hey you know you can't you can't promote this as an alf pilot and an alf reading so um, we just changed it to ralph We did a hundred sketches in a hundred minutes. Oh my God. Yeah, those kids taught me a lot. We didn't care about the money. Yeah, we'd make profit, but you know what? Daniel Curlin, I never cashed in those checks. I don't know why. Here's mom and Auntie Hermie in my room. So what do you think? I think it's marvelous. Okay. All right, so I'm going to enter everyone. My name is Dan Ramos, and this is Filipinos. Here I have a Filipino stand-up comedian, Brent Weinbach. Brent, uh, as a token of my appreciation here, here's a little uh, Filipino souvenir for you. That's neat. 
That's really neat. Yeah. Just so you know, um, I'm I'm actually only half Filipino. What? I'm only half Filipino. Just so you know. I'm only half Filipino. 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 Hmm. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks. Yeah, you could. That's the, the interview's over. Yeah, I got no time. Yeah, just... <clears throat> Half? Really? Oh. He's gone? Good. to LA on my first week of living here. I went to this bookstore, Samuel Adams or something, on Sunset in, in WeHo. It's gone right now, it's probably Starbucks, but um. So I was there with my friend, Mark DeBonis. Tell the Italian guy, tell it like this, tell it like this. Guy coming up. His name is Dan Ramos, everybody. He's looking around and I see a book, LA casting and managers, and I just wanna find a rep here in the US. So I'm at the cash, I'm about to pay, and then I see Quentin Tarantino walk into the store, and I'm like, oh my god, and then he's walking over and takes a book, and he's looking at the book and reading the book, and I'm like, oh my god, Quentin Tarantino is reading an art book, because I'm looking at the book, and the book says art. Now I'm about to go, and Mark puts his hand on my shoulder, and he's like, yo, don't, I'm like, you don't tell me what to do. So now I'm walking out of Tarantino with the book, and I see, and I didn't know how tall he was, and I'm gonna take the, <laughs> I'm take the magazine. I pat him on the shoulder. Hey, and he's like, huh? Like, hey, do you think I'm gonna find an agent in here? He opens it up, takes his greasy ass fingers, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, maybe, yeah. Hands it back to me, and I'm like, cool. This is all on you, man. All right. <laughs> he starts chuckling. Okay. And then I walked away and I turn around and I go, oh, by the way, uh, years ago I did this Kill Bill parody called Killed Mo and um, YouTube flagged it. So he's like, yeah, you know what? Uh, they do that sometimes. I go to the cashier, I put the pamphlet down and he's looking at me like, don't you talk to him? I'm like, yeah, why don't you want to talk to your heroes, idiot? 
And then within two weeks, I found a manager and agent. I'm not broke. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the thing. I mean, that's now, the goal, you know? Like, I mean, I'm not rich, but I can pay my bills. I can, be, you know, I have a daughter who's 15. Don't worry about her you know, at all. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can survive. I'm okay. And I made a commitment kind of to myself that I just wanted to do things that made me happy. People I like to work with. I mean, I, I wrote it down. Right. I wrote it down. You gotta. <laughs> and you know what? The world opened up. I swear. I'm working. I just like one thing after another. I just, once I opened up my heart, and when I'm there, I try to be really present and really enjoy people mm. and not think that, you know, they don't. I'm allowing them to see the real me and whether they don't they like it or they don't like it. I mean, I'm a nice person. So hey, I the fact that you even rescheduled and made sure that, you know, we meet here at two, in my head, I would look at the text and like, this is happening. <laughs> I'm saying to you, it took me so long to be able to be really present and then be able to give them as much of me as I can. Mm. And it's not easy to do, because you're not, you you're know, I'm not always the star of the show. Right. So I'm Filipino. <laughs> okay. That was a little bit awkward. Thank you everyone. Thank you. My name is Dan the Clown. If you guys like what you see in here, please tip. Thank you. That's a penny. Hey man, here's a tip. How about you quit being a clown and go into nursing? Don't make more money that way. Was that supposed to mean? Exactly what I just said. What are you, like Filipino or something? Yeah. Have you looked around? There aren't any Filipino clowns anywhere, especially in Hollywood. There's one now. You fucking suck, Asian bozo. Maybe somebody you got a pipe will one day that. I hope. Thank you, Father. Hi, Carla. This is one of, are you Carla? I called you a couple of days ago about renting out the one bedroom. Who are you? I'm Dan the Comic from Montreal. I flew in for pilot season. Oh yes, Dan. I'm Carla. Yeah, of, of course. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Nice to meet business with you. Do you have the cash? Yeah. And the paperwork? And it's signed Perfect. too. All right. Welcome. Awesome. Come on in. Okay. to eat an apple. French. Je veux manger une pomme. Je veux manger une pomme. 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 Pomme.
pain. Je veux manger. Tu vas manger. Did you say tu manges? Je veux manger in pain. <sighs> French sucks. Now you suck. Excuse yeah, no, me. That's right. Look at that. Your hair got long. Don't touch my curly curls. I think I'm gonna keep it. Look yeah. like a look like a surfer dude. <laughs> So that's it, Mr. Hollywood? Yeah. I mean, after four callbacks from that pilot and no calls back, you kind of get the point. But what can you do, you know? Give myself four months and that's it. Dan, you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, you're actually one of the few Filipinos out there in Hollywood going into casting rooms and making a difference. There aren't that many Asians in Hollywood. Yeah, thanks. Wait, how'd you know I was Filipino? I heard you FaceTime with your mom the other day and no. you had a slight Filipino no. accent. Hi, Ma. Oh, my God. <laughs> I do that, too, when I talk to my parents. They kind of slightly understand me better when I speak in an accent. See, I knew it. Can't we never mention that we were both Filipino? Do you know how to cook Filipino food? Jollibee? Jollibee? I'm getting to know the scene and I'm like, you know what, it's time, Dan. It's time for people to get to know you. So the first thing I do, I write down every single top dog casting director and one of them, her name was Julie Ashton. She had cast it for like a bunch of CBS shows and whatnot and I was just like, this person would be a good person to know. <laughs> so I go up to Hollywood and Vine, I'm about to go to Julie Ashton's office because I have like a manila envelope with my headshot, a real one this time because I could afford to actually print out a colored headshot. I go in and, and I'm looking at the doors and it's a gold, it's gold. I'm like, what the frick? A door guy already like, hello, hey, hello. I'm like, yeah, I'm here to see Julie. It's like, yeah, Julie, Julie who? I'm like, Julie Ashton? Yeah, yeah. You have an appointment with her? I'm like, what? You have an appointment with her? I'm like, uh, no, I'm just, you know, I just want to give this to her. And he goes, well, uh, you, you can't go upstairs if you don't have an appointment. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm just, he's like, Ugh. all of a sudden this tall black guy walks by us and he shows the security guard the badge and I look at him and I'm like, Lucas! And he's like, huh? Door guy's like, you know him? He's like, yeah, this is Dan, Dan Ramos. Lucas, the guy from UCB, I'll put a picture up. He's like, uh, he's good? He's like, yeah, yeah, he's a funny guy. He's like, okay. So now, like, I'm in the elevators with him, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, yo, Lucas, I'm gonna sneak into Julie Ashton's office and hand this headshot. He's like, what? I can't even get to her. How? Do you have an appointment with her? No. And... You just gonna go in there? I'm like, yeah. Get a tap on the shoulder and it's a, an elevator guy. I'm like, what is this, Madman season one? So I'm like, hello. And he's like, wait. So, do you like to the uh, doorman down there? I'm like, yeah. And now you're gonna go lie to me and you're gonna go and uh, sneak into uh, Julie Ashton's office? I'm like, yeah. Doors open. He's like, okay. I'm like, what? The door's closed. I see Lucas. What the fuck? Now my heart's pumping right. I'm like, oh. I'm like, I gotta act like a white girl. I gotta act like a Karen. I gotta act like I, I, I give a shit. So I open the door and all of a sudden this white lady goes, excuse me. I'm like, I need to see Julia. I, need, I, I wasn't sure if that was her. It's like, okay, can you go upstairs? Go upstairs. I'm like, go upstairs. I'm, so now I'm walking up these spiral stairs and I see a bunch of beautiful looking people just looking at me go up and I'm like... I open the door, I see Julia on the phone. She's like, what? I'm like, hi, I'm Dan Ramos. She's like, what? And I just put the, you know, I give it to her. And she's like, okay, thank you. I'm like, thank you. And I walk away and all of a sudden I hear the, like her shoving into the shredder. I'm kidding, no. So I'm like, well, she knows me now. What is up? Okay, Dan Ramos, this is a little memo to yourself. Right now, you are about to go to Warner Brothers Studios to do a test pilot uh, of most likely to. Uh, you'll be playing Dante. He sent in the tape. 
you waited a month. Remember when you did the tape you did on Valentine's Day? So you had to do Valentine's celebration on the 13th to make up for the 14th. Uh, Carla was okay with it. So a month later, Julie Ashton, the casting director that I snuck into her office and, you know, pretended that I had a meeting with her and dropped my headshot. Two years later, uh... Because of Greg, who was also from Corner Booth as a manager, he got the meeting, and then we negotiated the whole thing. Got into the casting director, blew her mind away. She sent the tape to the producers. The producers loved it. And the producers, they sent it to the NB, uh, the Warner Brothers execs, and today it is the day uh, you are uh, about to sign six years. Hopefully, if they love you, six years of your life. That's what they said. For. I said, don't worry about money. It's true. You see, it comes true, huh? Ah, uh ah, -uh, you cry again. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Because I know he's worried. He's worried about money. Because the three university, you know, it's not easy, huh? I said, don't worry, I'm gonna sell this house. I don't care about the house. He said, as long as you go to school, we put the money here. Thousand dollars an episode. I got all those news the day after Pa's birthday, and it's going to be in between Mom's birthday. Uh, that's what's happening now. The meeting's at 2 p.m., so it's We are here on Sherbrooke and Saint Laurent, home of the Just for Laughs Theater and Museum, where a lot of famous comedians have performed here, like Jerry Seinfeld, Russell Peters, Dan Ram. No, no, but one day I will. After a couple of years of living in Los Angeles, I managed to finally get into the Just for Laughs Festival. I get to do 60 minutes of whatever I want. Three nights. Home court advantage. I'm losing it. Go from Montreal, Toronto, Toronto, New York, New York, LA, and now I'm back, that's... I'm like, I'm gonna make the craziest show. I start writing my story. Everything, every little event, every little thing, and um, a couple of weeks later, my brother calls me up. He's in Montreal. He's like, done. Yeah. Come back home. Pa's dying. His body is just, just failing on him. That's us, Pa. I know how to walk now. Fly from LA to Montreal. First thing we do is I just go into the hospital and I'm there with my dad and I'm looking at him and I'm like, ah. he couldn't talk. He's just still. He could only listen. And that's when Good husband. I just started singing Dun Dun Soy to him. Uh, he's blinking. Yeah, he's awake. Oh, he's awake. He's a good husband. 
I remember your Lola Prasek. He said to me, he said, don't forget to love your husband. He think I don't like, I don't la- I love your uh, uncle. He said, you have to love your husband, huh? Uh, my mother was telling me that. I want to share that I love your uncle. Uh, you know what? I go back home, you know, we were switching shifts with my brothers, my mom, and other family members, and then I have to go back to thinking, like, okay, like, how do I, how do I complete the show? The show wasn't even done yet. So now I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to get my dad involved. I tell him all my stories, I tell him all my sexcapades, every single little woman that I'm... I see his eyes just. <laughs> I told me she was 50, ba. An Italian woman is 50. My mom and my auntie heard me are laughing. What? She's older than us? <laughs> On June 15th, I um, was invited to the comedy nest to do a set, a longer set, to practice for my one hour set at Just for Laughs. And I looked at my mom, is it okay? She's like, yeah, don't worry, just take your time, go, you know? And I looked at my pa. And I'm like, pa, I'll be back, huh? Okay? I'll be a good boy. I was going to tell us, be a good boy. I take the metro all the way to Atwater, get off, and go into the old school Montreal Forum, and there's a comedy club up there, and I I do my set. I shut my phone on and do my set. And I don't check my phone. I'm still respecting the other comics. As soon as the show was over, I was like, okay, I think, I think I'm ready for the show. I turn on my phone get a bunch of notifications. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry. My condolences. Where are you? And I'm in the green room. I'm at the comedy nest. And I'm like, I think my dad just died. I, I, I leave to go to the hospital. I get a text from my brother saying, hey, you're gonna get rid of the body. You're gonna get rid of Pa if you don't come out now. Like, it's... So now I'm walking like towards the exit and I see a couple of people like, hey, you were funny, can we take pictures? I'm like, what? Can we take a picture? So I'm like... I start walking out and I'm like... I make it all the way to the hospital. All my family members are already waiting outside. They cried out. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. I open the door and I see my dad just... I had him like I didn't have to go. I could have just stayed. Maybe plan for the funeral. Cremated him. And a couple weeks later I had to do the show. And it was the craziest experience of my life. Craziest part. My mom took part of it. Vietnam right now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> They're not looking for me. They're probably looking for me. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, you don't know this, but so that was the second time I saw you. 
The first Creeper, time you man. had no idea. See, because I uh <laughs> I saw Bobby Lee at the improv. Never mind. And you opened oh! for him. Thank you so much for coming to the show. I thought the shows were pretty good. Um I like all my operas, a little fucking um leprechaun that we had open for me was his name, the brown leprechaun. Yeah, Dan Ramos. I like him. He likes like you, except you know, if 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 you were disem- dissembled and put back together. He's a good looking guy. Dan, Dan's handsome. <laughs> I'm gonna cry right now. You know why? Why? That was a year ago. And that's when it I saw you. Literally, how the fuck? What is He's like literally my favorite comedian. And you being up there, that's fucking amazing, man. <laughs> that was a dream for me. Like, <laughs> I my, bet. I, like dude, my whole life. Filipino, <laughs> Canadian kid, looking at Bobby Lee, saying, maybe I could do that. <laughs> I gotta write jokes. This is it. This is my. This is a wake up call. And then all of a sudden, I moved from Montreal, Toronto, Toronto, New York, New York, LA, and I'm living in a garage at this time in 2016 for like a couple of months. And then within the first few months, I bump into Bobby, the comedy star. He's like, yeah, and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> my girlfriend's like, Dan, you go talk to him. He's looking at you. I'm like, and Carla goes, I'm gonna go to the bar and buy two beers. And if you come back and you're not talking to him, I'm gonna dump you. And I'm like. Mm? <laughs> so she goes to the bar and then I see Bobby go like this hey come here and I'm like so I walk over to him and we're already laughing because we look exactly the same <laughs> like yo man in your hair I'm like yeah you're too good for stash and he's like you Filipino I'm like yeah yeah he's like you a comic I'm like yeah he's like cool and he, he just interrupts me he's like my, my girlfriend's Filipino Kalila you, you guys would love her I'm like Dude, this is this is so crazy. Let me tell you though, the that funny, guy has a guy. pretty spectacular look. He has a good look. It's very um uh there's only really one way to put it. It's like a mutant. Like no, 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 it's like you're you're uh he's mastered. <laughs> just, that was a game uh, reply. Sewer person. Yeah, yeah. It's like your Sewer person. What? Whoa. Whoa. Your creepy Tito, you know? With a mustache with a mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying like he has a good creepy uncle look. You know what it, no, you know what he looks like? It's it's like an alien, right? It's like an alien that visited us for ten seconds. Like he met one human went on Earth, right? And then like he got zapped back into space. Mm. And then three thousand years later he's still alive. Mm. And somebody said, Draw what you thought think a human looks like. And that was it. From that one ten second interaction. Yeah. And he would draw Dan Ramos. Paper, 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 paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like wow. that. But he's a really castable face. Oh yeah, yeah he, he does. He has a very interesting. Definitely look. beat me out on stuff. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh shit, Gil, you got competition. And then we- to move back to Montreal. So we packed up everything. We put everything in our friend's garage, Nikki San Pedro, looking for her to be in my life. We're cleaning up the rest of the apartment and uh, around 10 p.m. we drive to Pasadena to, towards Nikki's home and in the 101 Hollywood Highway drunk driver just hits us from the back of my girlfriend's vehicle. It was like a sudden stop in the middle of the highway. And just... the whole 
time I'm like this is how I'm gonna die. <laughs> I started thinking about if I was paralyzed, can I still play the piano? Can I still move my fingers? I don't care if I could see or not, I just want to play the piano. I open my eyes and I just hear Carla scream. I look out and cars just pass away. A drunk driver. We couldn't go back. I like it. It's a song. That's not that real. You're doing good. show tonight, but I am still not comfortable being around people, and so I'm appearing through a surrogate. <laughs> I was trying to be a Filipino, but I was Puerto Rican. And I tried to tell him, hey, you guys, Miguel, Miguel Ramos, that was Antonio Banderas movie. And I was like, yo, Miguel Ramos is also a Filipino name. And they were like, yeah, yeah, but we need you to be Puerto Rican. I had like Puerto Rican flags on my clothes. I was like, shit. <laughs> you ran out of ink, dude. <laughs> Okay. He gives you no. so much. I give <laughs> <laughs> And that's the joke. <laughs> well done. Very well done. <laughs> Everyone has a funny in that it's up to you to discover where it is. <laughs> That's why I love you, Dan, because it doesn't matter if uh, exactly. if the audience is laughing, it, if you it. are laughing. I love it, I love it. <laughs> uh, I hope I you two find success when you're alone in a dark hey, room we telling can entertain each other. Each other. <laughs> <laughs> so the apocalypse. Um, no, we will entertain each other in a dark basement somewhere.
Dan Ramos is a man made of comedy. He'll make you think and he'll make you see how someone's head might end up in someone else's anus. <laughs> Never mind, get inside the mind of a man who's a Montreal native with a take on the world that's bizarre and often masturbative. Dan wants to be in a group with you. <laughs> but he's number one and you're number two. You are one, you are two. <laughs> no! So the guy with no arms will have to do this time. Mother even knew, but deemed it fine. Just one time, several times, all the time. Dan Ramos is a man whose kids will be messed up in the best way possible. So, what's next for Dan Ramos? Well... Yeah, you know... There's no ending to this show. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, Dan Ramos, dude, that's one of, you know why I didn't watch it? Because this fuck right here, every time I run into this fuck, he was, he was, he would go, hey, you know I'm in a big movie. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, no, man. He's like, it's malignant, dude. You're in so many big movies, dude. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your dreams. And if you do, you have to How did you get involved? Uh, All right. <clears throat> I know. I love my moderator. I'm gonna be so real, guys. This is the truth. When I went into the audition, I went in and I. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna sell this house. I don't care about the house. They said, as long as you go to school, we put the money here, over here. It's true. I was the one. I was the one. I said, don't worry about money. It's true. You see, it comes true, huh? Ah, uh ah, -uh, you cry again. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Because I know he's worried, he worried about money. Because the three university, you know, is not easy, yeah. So now you're finished, and you're still crying. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs>